in Reseda with a man named Archie and I am discussing with him what's going on in the world and I'm specifically interested in interviewing Archie because from my perspective the first Americans to wake up to what was happening in the world is the Euro Eastern Europeans or people that have lived under communism before they saw potentially the handwriting on the wall so I wanted to let Archie uh, explain his life experience and how you know he first came to realize that something was seriously wrong with what was happening here in America. Hello, everybody. Well, first time I realized when I was uh, washing a cars when I just came to this country in a parking lot, thinking this is a country of the free enterprise, and uh, I've been given ticket, and I was asking like, who am I bothering? I mean, I'm just having a little. You know, a couple of gallons of water and just washing a car in a parking lot with, between me and the owner of the car, there was an agreement. So logically thinking, if you live in a free country, nobody's supposed to harass you. That was the first time that alerts you. I understood the government has a lot of control. And I'm talking about 1993. Things were way more freer than now. Yeah. You could smoke anywhere you want. You could say whatever you want, right? So the second time I, I understood that the system is pretty much unfree when I was driving a taxi cab for a city of West Hollywood and I've been ticketed across the street, a big misdemeanor ticket and car was towed because I picked up in the city of LA, which is across the street, uh, just only across the street from wow. West Hollywood. Yeah. So then I realized that this is no joke, this is a fascist country. And then slowly, slowly I start realizing how fascist this system was because the Soviet Union was, in my time, Brezhnev's time, 70s and 80s, it was a much freer country. Nobody would ever tow your car just because you want to make a couple of dollars. Nobody would ever touch in Soviet Union. Nobody would ever give you a parking ticket. Nobody would ever harass you. The worst you could have in Soviet Union, back in my time, not Stalin's time, when if you were spitting or something, you could just give the cop like 10 bucks and he would let you go. <laughs> that, that was the worst thing could happen to you. We never know, knew what the court system is in Soviet Union. We never knew the courthouses or judges for, for such a petty shit like parking tickets and licensing issues and towings. There was no such a thing. So what you're saying is essentially even under a outright communist you know, socialist country, you had more freedom 100%, than, definitely. than what you thought definitely, was a free country. <laughs> so No one in 70s, 80s, unless they murdered somebody or, or stole a lot of money from some budget or something for thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, would ever see a court. We never knew. None of us knew when we were, you can live like whole, your whole life in, in Soviet communist uh, times. I'm talking about 70s, late 60s, 70s, and all 80s. You, you would never know where the courthouse is. The only time you would face the courthouse if you do like felony, like you stop somebody with knife or you have a big problem and big fight or, or whatever, you, you beat up the cop or maybe you, you got caught stealing government's factories, money from a budget, then maybe. But uh, not maybe, yeah, then you will see the court. Other than that, there was no court system for traffic violations. There was no court system for little Mickey Mouse stuff. There was no such thing like misdemeanor. None of these things. The regulatory uh, or traffic issues were never put in a court. We never know who the judge is. Only bad guys were going to judge. So, I don't know if you saw the interview, but I saw an interview given by a KGB agent where he talked about... With the Ray Griffin? Yeah, the ideological subversion of America, right? So, here we thought we had some, you know, free market, capitalistic well, country. It's an illusion. It, it, it it's is. An illusion. Uh, it, a little bit, yeah, some businesses like little bakeries, mechanic shops, some little mm -hmm. ones, yeah. But, I mean, overall... The Soviet time, nothing was on a paper as a capitalistic system. But without any papers, everyone was doing, buying, selling, creating something. Mm -hmm. It was not an issue. The worst could be, like I said again, any inspector from city, anybody would come to you, you give him 50 bucks and you would be left alone. You could pay very little, much less than you pay here in fees, and uh, you would be left alone. They'll let you make your money. The other thing I wanted to discuss is, you know, up until recently, you know, there had been some people who thought that Putin 
was potentially not a globalist and on the side of the people. And I wanted to just get your perspective on what's happened recently that might make people realize a different conclusion. Oh, this corona thing, so-called corona, so-called virus, I call it corona fascism, that uh, covered the most countries in the world, it was the best indicator. It indicated and opened up a lot of people's eyes that uh, uh, only logic would suggest in me, and I was watching carefully uh, as, as everything was unfolding, that if, if any any government would declare any pandemic with a false uh, alarm, such as virus, they're definitely part of the New World Order. Definitely. So I thought, I hope Putin is having any uh, some opposition to New World Order, but that was a scenario. The game was played in the Isel Boot Charlotte. I recommend, highly recommend listening to her. was talking about this two years ago. Paul Craig's Roberts had a big article about that being staged, warning that Putin is not no hero. Mm -hmm. Putin is part of the game. It's just because the Russia will have a part playing in a, in a new world order plan that's going to be Eastern Bloc, controlling of Eastern Bloc. So yes, Putin is a piece of shit globalist for sure. Everything he, his, his, he has done now, everything indicates, proves they want to microchip people, have electronic surveillance everywhere, cashless society, all everything that has been offered to American people, it's offered in Russia, same thing. So from all you, you are internationally communicating with people. Oh, so yeah. from, you know, your international communication, what is the sediment around the world? Is it pretty much the same story everywhere? Or is there anybody that you're talking to that's seeing a little different story right now? Are you talking about the people? Yeah, the people. Well, most people, <clears throat> most people are shippable everywhere. The balance is equal, I would say. 50 plus percent percent of people are shippable everywhere. They have no brains, they're, they're hypnotized, they cannot use their brain, they look at the same mass media BS. But I mean, the, peop the, qu the, qu the quality is still there among people who's waking up, who wakes other people up, which is, I would say, I would be, you know, I, I would notice that uh, the more they push us towards the end, the more they got pushback. That's the good news. More, 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 more resistance is being built, built up against all this uh, uh, machine called global machine that is taking our freedoms away and uh, the fascist regime that uh, has been designed. And I have to give him, I have to give him a heads up, man. This is a genius idea. Just say the word virus. It's an invisible. It's genius. I mean, I have to applaud. Women <laughs> <laughs> is. It was a genius genius it's like it's super genius evil plan. genius right well evil no evil yeah of course evil yeah genius is genius yeah. regardless of it's evil or kind right it's just genius i yeah. mean it's 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 i mean for us people who who has knowledge and, and brain to think and has been studying how the evil people of this world operate that was no surprise for us that's why we get it right away but i mean for uh for like for the evaluation of it, for the sake of evaluation, I would say that's genius. Now, it's even more genius than terrorism. And you've been internationally a, a spokesperson for quite some time oh, now. Oh yeah, about about ten years. I've been I've been as a guest invited as a political analyst in, uh, to Russian television, and they pulled my videos. Which one of them I said it clearly. We don't know what the the reaction of the Russia would be. Uh, United States is obviously under globalists because of this pandemic stuff. And then uh, once in five days after my interview, Putin declared the same pandemic. Mm -hmm. Just because in my video I was saying what I'm saying now, that any government which will declare pandemic, make a big deal out of it, and mm -hmm. force people to wear masks and dog leashes and all that stuff, yep. they have got globalists 100%. Right after uh, uh, Putin declared the... Declared pandemic and start harassing the doctors and uh, faking numbers and all the same scenarios in the United States, my videos were pulled with 1,250,000 views. And as of today, it would gain 2 million views. Wow. They pulled that, which proves that uh, I was right. And that's happening. There's media being pulled worldwide right now. Anybody oh, who's oh, not, oh, yeah. who's calling Corona it's hoax. Yeah. Anybody says anything about that thing. The so-called virus, yep. uh, you know, uh, th their videos have been pulled one by one. Yep. Some of us are still lucky to survive because there's too many, but yes. 
uh, CEO of YouTube announced that we are going to monitor and remove the videos that is in controversy to what the World Health Organization recommends. I, I did hear that, and yeah, they yeah. specifically put it in their community <clears throat> yeah, guidelines. Yeah, they just openly huh? saying it, yeah. So, now, recently in America, did when did you start speaking up to other Americans, alerting them that, hey, you know, this pandemic stuff might not be what they <laughs> say? Not, listen, I started speaking up to Americans since 9-11. Oh, wow, okay. And I've been speaking for a long time, and then I got tired of it because it was stressing me out, and things got quiet down, kind of. They left us alone for a little bit, and mm -hmm. I just was speaking, not intentionally, but whenever I had a chance, had a chance to talk about it. But now when a pandemic happened, the same day I start talking about it. So same that kind of just reinvigorated you, and you just said, all right, now I'm not going to hold back anymore. No, no, no way, because this is, this is a big... This is a big deal. If 9-11 was done for, for future plans to slowly, you know, get rid, of, get rid of our constitutional rights and slowly arouse our freedoms, you know, the process starts slowly. And this is an attack. This is an open attack. This is worse than 9-11. If 9-11 affected us with Patriot Act and <clears throat> certain, you know, restrictions to, in, you know, for, about the air flights, the searches and all this stuff, you could do the opt out and not be part of these scanner machines. Uh, but this is affecting right now. They put their hands in our pocket, in our hearts and souls. This is, this is an attack of the worst magnitude. This is the biggest scam for the last maybe, I don't know, maybe a thousand years. This is the biggest scam ever. Now, if for people that maybe, you know, maybe you didn't have as restrictive of a government in your time, but people that you know that live through, you know, very restrictive governments, what did they do to stay alive? How do, how do you survive when the government is clamping down? You know, what are some of the things, you know, that people did maybe historically or what? Can... Historically, only one thing helped people being together, get together, spread information and get guns. Mm. To be able the to defend themselves. I don't want to scare anybody. The technology they have, which is those super drones and mm -hmm. uh, high tech weaponry that they have. Mm, uh, they will, they will, they will hesitate to use them a lot because then, obviously, they will declare the war. Even the last ship in the world would wake up and not to be aggrieved people being killed. So, they will not dare to use all the equipment they have. I think there's even though I'm not sure about this psychopath behavior, mm -hmm. but we have no choice. I mean, we either live free or die, or it's, there is no ors. I mean, there is no third option. So, you know, and one other thing I wanted to discuss, or at least, you know, but just having a young child, uh, you know, in the world today, and what that's like for you as a father, and, you know, why potentially you're speaking up, how it all ties in. So, how do you see the outlook for the children right now? There is no ifs. I want to be, I want to stay positive. There is no ifs. We will win. We have to. So I don't want to even discuss the the opposite option. I just don't even want to put it in words. So I don't even want to materialize any of these images mm -hmm. of the opposite, yeah. uh, the second option. We have only one option. We must win. That's it. But whatever the price is going to be, but we have to be smart and try to be very productive. So the, the efficiency, we have to be efficient. We can't just fight like crazy and be killed. The, with the police gone just on the streets of LA or whatever we are, we have to be more, much smarter than that. If situation will go to towards the violence or something, we have to be prepared to be to be in a in a in a situation that's going to benefit us. So we have to have the maximum output, defend ourselves. But the best of all, not to let the situation to go there. Yeah. Before. That's the last resort. That will be the best, and the only thing we can do, keep waking people up. That's the only, the only solution we have. Once information is out there, the truth known is to, to as many as possible people, including the law enforcement people, including local judges, attorneys, anyone, as many as possible, medical employees, whatever, everyone, fire department people, whatever. You know, more of the chances we have to solve this problem with the minimum casualties.
But either way, you can't see your son growing up in a world that's oh, going the one more. They offer us? Yeah, the oh, one no, go, no. going more in the COVID direction and no, face no, masks. No, no, and, that's a no. Yeah, that's a no. I will believe me if that was come to worse. I don't want to say this if, but hypothetically saying, in some planet X, I don't want to, you know, uh, project this have a, on on our planet. Let's say in some planet there is some situation, and someone wants to have a good life for his kid, that someone in that planet should find some little island, some country must be out there mm -hmm. that you can more or less by bribing them or whatever, having connections being left alone. Okay. And, but it's better than uh, COVID life. Yeah, no doubt. And so, um, is there anything else you wanted to kind of just, you know, give to Americans to kind of, you know, look out for or just, uh, you know, some words of wisdom oh, for them? Yes. Oh, yes. Don't believe the government. <clears throat> Whatever government tells you the opposite is the truth. 110% you can verify it. Everything they tell you the opposite is true. When they tell you Diet Coke and uh, genetically modified food is not that bad for you, you bet your ass it's bad. <laughs> they tell you there is a global warming, I bet there is a global cooling, which is true, we know that. They said terrorists attacking us, they are the terrorists. So if they tell you there is a bad virus, I guarantee you there is no virus. And then look, they tell you antibacterial, which is one of the worst things one of the that worst spreads. Things. Everything they you know. said, the opposite is to true. So if you have that matrix and that foundation as your thinking formula, you can never go wrong. But what I'm saying is, do not be afraid of speaking the truth. You can't be afraid of government because they're supposed to work for us. We don't work for them. We are not their slaves, they're our employees. Always remember that, as Thomas Jefferson said, the man who has the truth in his hand, backing him up, he has nothing to worry about. Remember that Thomas Jefferson, guys, you are Americans. I came here, I'm naturalized. You should know these things better than I do. And the saddest thing is that I'm teaching Americans how to be American. Yep. And they tell me sometimes, <laughs> go back to your country. I'm like, what the hell is this? Well, that goes back it's to, ridiculous. if we go back to the founding of America, the whole idea was people came here looking for freedom Same. on the back of decimating Native Americans. Yep. And when they got here, they found out they weren't as free and there weren't as much opportunities as they hoped for. So really, we all have to realize no matter when we came to this country, we were all sold a bill of goods at some point if we immigrated to this country. And we're all waking up to the reality that we've never had freedom in the first place. We all come here for one reason, like not all, but most people. I personally came here because I, I did believe in, in, in what, what U.S. Constitution is offering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did believe in it until I realized it doesn't work anymore. It became a paper, but it's too late now. So basically, I probably would be better off staying in Armenia if I knew what I know now. Even though COVID showed me that I wouldn't be better off nowhere. Right. So we have to fight all of us for all this stuff. I don't care what color and religion you are. So we're basically waking up to the reality that it is truly the people versus the government. And we didn't ask for that. No, we're, we're, we're the ones who started. We're just, uh, you know, living our lives. But there's a group of people that feels like they have the right to subjugate the rest oh, of yeah. us. And they, right now, through the banking interest, wouldn't you say, in every country, how do they have so much power? It's because they control the purse strings of every country, right? Yes. So they buy the governments, they buy the media. They print the money to buy. That's they right. They don't even have to have the real money to buy. They can <laughs> no. just print it. It's a paper and a printing machine. That's where the whole evil is. There is no Satan behind them. There is no devils and dark forces like religious people like to put in their head and having this fear mongering on subconscious level without even realizing when it's talking about God versus the, the Satan right now, it's a fight between dark forces and God's forces. Hypothetically, you can say that, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. But in reality, let me take all the money from Bill Gates, stop that printing machine, and take all the money from Soros, and let me see how evil and what kind of dark forces behind them. It, this is gonna be a little angry parking enforcement, yeah. guys. Yeah. <laughs> if that, even, you know, if there they is will, a... Yeah, they'll get a job, minimum job as a security guy. They'll get <laughs> evil on their little level. It's just they have the money, that's why. There is no dark forces behind them. So yes, they believe in 666s and all this occultic stuff. Just like Zoroastros believe in the power of a uh, tree or the power of the rock, which is not necessarily always what they believe in. It. It's just a belief. It's a subjective belief. Yes, these people believe in Satanism and Luciferianism, but it doesn't mean that there is a real Lucifer sitting behind them 
just like for the religious people who believe that there is like a real man with a beard will come and fly to them and land and say, I'm helping you people. Time for me to return. Ain't nobody no returning people. Never will and it never happened before. You got to take care of your own self. You got to stand up for your stuff. And I don't care if you're Muslim, Christian, atheist, agnostic. It doesn't matter. We have the evil government. Which 6666 type of government that they believe because they do lots of TMD, lots of drugs. These people are psycho, crazy psychopaths, pedophiles, Satan worshippers. They're religious fanatics. It's that simple. So let's just defeat them. Let's just tell them, no, they're afraid of us. If they wouldn't be afraid of us, they would never pull our videos and they would never lie, us, lie to us on the mainstream media. That's a sure sign that they are afraid of us. Well, they, let's use that. So, you know, the way I broke it down, and let's see if you can agree with this kind of look at life. So you have the natural world that it comes from, that is mathematical, it's exact. You reap what you sow, you put a, a seed in the earth, and it grows beautiful things. But then we have this man-made construct, right, that is being run by people who have essentially made themselves the gods of this world, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that they think that they get to make the rules. Hey, you can wear this. You can't go here. This beach is closed. But these people are just all frauds at the end of the day because it's pretty common sense that if you look around, you know, Bill Gates didn't create the oceans. He didn't create the mountains. He didn't create, you know, the same. What, what control or what say do they really have and it's all just a figment nothing, of their own imagination nothing. they have nothing to say they're nobodies they're pieces of shit but we we should blame us the human nature blame your neighbor who doesn't want to listen to you blame your other neighbor who works in a little job in a little city hall thing and he becomes an inspector and harassing the house owners because they built a little shed in the backyard yeah build the blame the, the guy who becomes a cop and harasses you for uh, for a burn headlight and searches your car and you would end up in jail because he found something in your car. Blame the people. That the only difference between Bill Gates and other people, I don't even call them people, psychopaths, mini, mini trash. The, you know, that the, the Bill Gates is a maxi trash because he has more money. More money they have, more, more excuse for language, more assholes they are, more abilities they have to be those little snitches and uh, control freaks. It's a human nature we should blame. This has nothing to do with God or Satan or something. There is good people and bad people. So the thing about it is, is w w it's people that buy into the agenda. They are more guilty than the ones who create the agenda. So in reality- If I tell you go jump from a 10th floor, would you? <laughs> exactly, it's so and Bill- whose fault it is, the one who's jumping it, obviously, not the one who gives you that suggestion. So what you're essentially saying is somebody like Bill Gates wouldn't have any power if there weren't all the Absolutely. people that would just bow Absolutely. down and say, I'll go along Absolutely. with your agenda. If he says something and everybody's saying, screw you, what is he going to do? So. Like, hey, man, you know, go take a pill, bro. <laughs> That's it. I mean, if the cop, if the cop has been, the cop has been ordered to come and, and to the beach and harass and you say, you know, and he, he, let's say he doesn't want to be confrontational with his boss or something, but he says, okay, I'll say it. And he, he just drives his car and smokes a cigarette, don't harass nobody. We salute the cop like that. So even those uh, mayor and city orders and governor's orders wouldn't work. It's the us. It's not the people. Again, it's not the person who sold you bad cars or Rolls Royce that it's uh, uh, you go as a Rolls Royce. It's you who never check what, you, mm -hmm. what you're buying or... Another one would be, you know, it's not the person who told you to jump. That's you who jumped. It's, it's, the system is based on a slaves, on a robots, on people who... Orders. A people, people who, uh, um, who, 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 who like to get... The people who, in other words, people who choose to have a job when they have to comply with orders, they are immoral people. Mm -hmm. That's immoral to work anywhere that you have to be ordered around. And I'm not talking about the regular business when your boss tells you, okay, if you agree to work from nine to nine, your job is to do this and that. Now, I'm, not, I'm not talking about this kind of order. I'm talking about the structures where you have to do the orders according to any kind of law will be passed and existing, uh, regardless of if it's okay with your morality or not, if it's a moral law or not. More, most, most laws uh, in any state, any country, they're immoral. You can be punished for something that, uh, that you shouldn't be punished for, and we all know that. 
So, you know, from my perspective, when we have the concept of freedom, that means that every person gets to live the life of their dreams, follow their own heart. Absolutely. And that's really a moral life. But when you have to sacrifice not living by your own heart and you're willing to make that sacrifice, even though we're instructed that the true blasphemy is ignoring your own heart. Because if you look at it from the perspective of, you know, great spirit, the universe, your destiny, your purpose is in your heart. And if you're going to let somebody else take you from your purpose and not follow your heart, that is your own consenting to what would be considered sure. evil or not doing what's true to Absolutely. oneself. You know? Absolutely. You, you be, that, that, when you do that, you remove yourself from your natural being, state of being. From your natural deep inner yes, your yes, your own you, you're removing it to the artificially created BS dictated by people who have the power to dictate you what to do. Which means I'm not calling for anarchy or, or, or a society that everyone can do whatever they want, even hurting other people. I'm calling for a society that everyone's rights protected and yes, you can do whatever you want. If you're not hurting anyone, so that would that concept would be called sovereignty, right? I would call Indi sovereignty individual. Libertarian, so, yeah. libertarian platform would be the best to describe all this because libertarianism, it's not an ism in a classical uh, uh, meaning of the isms. It doesn't have a head leader. It doesn't have a one idea written by one man, uh, like Marxism or Bolshevism or whatever. Uh, that that's not even an ism. It's the state of the mind liberty it's libertarians this country was libertarian people don't forget that the founding at least of the, in its it ideals a, right it is a libertarian <laughs> idea it's right. the idea of normal human being like let everybody let be you be the way you are and let it be that everybody else right. unless they are violating your rights the freedoms that you have for example i give you examples because a lot of people cannot do it themselves so they have to be given examples to help them to understand what I mean. Let's say I'm playing the music right now. It's one o'clock in the morning or now, and I'm, I'm taking the freedom of my neighbor to be left alone. He has a right to ask me, saying, hey, please, can you lower the volume? Because I do what I want, but that interferes mm -hmm. with his equal rights with me. Mm -hmm. Then I have to lower my volume of my music because he asked me to. But if my neighbor would say, all the neighbors would say, fine, you can have the loud music as loud as you want till six o'clock in the morning. Then no government should punish me for that. So what you're essentially calling for is to live a consensual life. You, exactly. So if you, you know, you are free to do whatever you want, but when you involve somebody else or it affects somebody else, you get their permission. You, yes. And you have the respect to listen to somebody Absolutely. who's saying, Hey, you know, can you stop this or no, it's bothering Then they you. have a right to call the cops. Then police will enforce to protect this person's freedoms I, that I violated, for example. Right, if they can't That's communicate fair. with That's you directly. That's completely fair. Right, if you're but if not... there is no phone call made and no one is unhappy about it, why should we... We live in a society of collective punishment. We live in a society of collectivism. That's where the communism mm -hmm. comes from, mm -hmm. eliminates mm -hmm. from. That's why now everyone should wear the mask. This is the same concept yep. because you can affect others, mm -hmm. others. Uh, but the always question remains, if others so worry about being affected, they're free to have a mask or a spacesuit. Yep. They they are free to sit home or like bury themselves bury in. themselves in their backyard. They can <laughs> you know, bury themselves <laughs> their heads up or the opposite legs up. That's their problem, not mine. So. Speaking about living in a wrong world, yes, we, we, we live to, to, to find ourselves in this horrible, horrible, inhumane life that slowly people accepted it like a frog in a cold water. And when you put the frog in a cold water, that's what French people do, they cook frogs. You put them in a cold water and then they put the, the water on and frog cooks without jumping out of the water. This is the frog in the water. So that's your, you know, kind of alert to Americans right now that you are seeing the, the heat be turned up on the water and we are they've that been, frog. They've been, they've been doing this since they got rid of the Kennedy slowly. The, before it was very slow. But between the 9-11 and now, they speed it up. Because they saw the demoralization, they see how demoralized Americans are. First, when Bush started war, we had the one million people going to protest. After that, we have wars like no one ever even yep. could describe it, and there was no protest.
Well, here's something to consider. Uh, George W. Bush, George, uh, the first president, um, not W, not, George H. W. Don't call him a president. Right, exactly. Scam first artist. Puppet. Yeah. Well, he was there the in puppet. Dallas when JFK oh, got killed. Yeah, it connected to the Bush family. Are you conspiracy theorist? <laughs> but now, here's what I want to really get out, though. So the Bush family not funded the Nazi party, the skull and crossbones. That's why the oh, Nazis... They're, they're innocent people. They never found you conspiracy theorist. <laughs> 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 my mouth. I want to drool. <laughs> you conspiracy theorist. How could government do that? There's too many people would be involved in this. That mentality goes here. Yeah. The jumpers, I call them jumpers mentality. The ones who jump from the 10th floor because they've been given suggestions. Government would never suggest me to jump from a building and die. A special agency, make sure it's safe. <laughs> it's about vaccines, it's about everything. So at the end of the day, these same people have infiltrated the American government. They funded all of these other isms. So, you know, and I've, I've told people this too, and they can't seem to get it. America got democratic socialism with FDR. Uh, Germany got national socialism with Hitler. And Stalin and Mao got communism. But they're all the same thing. And same it, place. You know. It's the same theater. Same stage with different actors. The goal is same, to have the same viewers watching the same show. And in America, we have the privilege, as George Carlin was saying, hey, you gotta, you gotta see, you gotta be, you have a privilege being in the front row. <laughs> well, thank you for your time tonight, Archie. Is there anything else you want to add before no, we close up? Thank you. And I agree, we're all going to have to stand up for what's right at this time because there is no ground for us to give at this point. Yeah, so we've got thank to take our feelings back. There is no other choice, guys. Either you, you're going to get it in a position when your face is looking the other way, called right, something has been done from the back and we're just looking forward, or you're just going to stand up and say, you know, stick the middle finger in them and just, you know, say, hey, no. Thank you. Well, thank you for uh, giving us this interview and giving you your perspective on this whole situation. And I hope this helps everybody out there to just think. We're not, there's no ideas we're trying to put in anybody's minds. We're only trying to get people to think and start asking questions for themselves and take a look at what's happening. So thank you very much for tuning in. And thank you once again, Archie. Have a great night. No, thank you.